Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here for this usually very long video which is called Pens for the Month. Today is Pens for September 2021 and this is a long video where I show you the pens that I am using in this particular month. So, uh, today we are already uh, more than past half the month, but I couldn't do that earlier. I've been struggling a little bit to do these videos because, as you know, um, I think last two months I didn't even get the chance to record this video. So, today I'm here and let's do it. I'll try to publish it today. Uh, let's see. So, starting with the first pen. I have to say, first of all, this is a long video. I will show you 24 pens that I have inked right now and I will leave down there on the description of the video the timestamps for each pen, the place where you can get the pen if the pen is still available and also a link to my review on YouTube. So, this is the introduction, let's start with the first pen. And we will start with a brand that I've been focusing a little bit lately, which is Lamy. So, we are starting in Germany with a pen that is very hard to light properly. It's very, very hard because it has some hard reflections. And which pen is this? This is the Lamy CP1 in matte steel. This one has a medium nib and made of steel. This is an older version which has no Lamy engraving or nib size. And it has Waterman South Sea Blue. This is the turquoise from Waterman. It now has another name. I never remember it, but you can easily check. The, the turquoise from Waterman is still the same color, but with a different name. So, this is a matte, it, like a brushed metal, it's a very nice, long, but very slim pen. It still has the sticker here, which should say somewhere in the middle M, but it's almost unreadable and I need to remove that sticker because it serves no purpose now. We will stay in Lamy and the next pen is this. This is a, the nice interesting pen that Lamy released for this year, for 2021, which is the Lamy Safari Original Terra, which is an, uh, an homage to the first edition of the Lamy Safari 1980. And so, this is the Lamy Safari Original Terra Red. This one has a medium, uh, a fine steel nib. This is one of those black coated fine Lamy nibs. You can see this one has the fine and Lamy there. Uh, which doesn't happen with the, the Islami CP1. And the ink it has is the Great Fountain Mystery Brown. And I am so sorry uh, because I didn't have the time yet to make the review of this ink. This ink was sent to me by Gabriel Falcinelli from Great Fountain is making, it has three inks. This one is inked. I started the review, I have the chromatography, the, 
the, the swatch card and so on, but I didn't make the, the review yet. I have to do it and post it soon. So here you can see, let me try to change a little bit the light. Uh, this is the Lamy Original Terra, Lamy Safari Original Terra Red. And we'll go to still in Germany, still in Lamy, the last Lamy of this group, which is this. This is the Lamy Dialog 3. And this pen is very nice. It was sent to me by Apple Boom for review. And let me show you. This is a very big and girthy pen. It's hard to fit all in the frame. Very big. So, a retractable nib. I think you saw that. You just twist the barrel. It's closed when these lines are aligned. Then you twist all the way the other side and the nib comes out. So this is the oops, Lamy. It's keeping because I think it is. it has been unused for quite a while. Let me just check if it has ink inside. Sometimes I forget to... let me show you. I will do it like this, just to prime the feed. Okay, and there is already ink there. So I, I think that's what happens when I sometimes I have the pens and used for a few days. As you can see, all these pens are cartridge converter pens. And this Lamy Dialog 3 also is a cartridge converter pen. So let's see how it writes now. So this is the Lamy okay, Dialog uh, 3 matte black. This is one of the smoothest pens I ever used with a medium gold nib. Let me show you the little nib. It is the same kind of nib, but you can see it is medium and then it says 14k. Uh, I'm not, I cannot show it that to you. Okay, I think now you can see it. 14k, 585 and then Lamy. So gold nib, two-tone, and it has one of my favorite inks ever, which is the Mont Blanc. It is discontinued now, you will not find it uh, easily, at least. Mont Blanc Racing Green. And... I'm not doing um, a smear test now because I mean, I have, I had some comments uh, here on the channel and they are right. When I show the smear test, maybe it's more, I try to show the wetness of the pen, but sometimes I'm showing more the wetness of the ink because I'm not really comparing uh, every pen, every different pen with the same ink and maybe I should do that to be fair. So, this is my Lamy, but we'll keep in ourselves in Germany and we'll go for this one, a pen that I quite like. I bought in Lisbon in the same store I bought the, that Lamy CP1. This is a rotring pen and this is the rotring 600 in black with a medium steel nib and the ink it has inside is Visconti red and you can see here very good pen to write to to use very a little stranger design um, but the pen works quite well it is a it's really a, a nice pen I'm just fighting here a little bit with the light setup uh, this one had the, that problem that shows in some of these, which is the, the metal cracks there. Maybe this is all too tight and that it sometimes it cracks, but it was um, fixed. And 
this is it. All these pens that I showed you so far have very um, stiff nibs with no line variation. Now, the next pen that I'm showing you is not Rotring, it is Caveco, so we are still in Germany. And I have this long pen with eight facets, which reminds me of a pencil. Very nice pen. So, this is the Caveco Special in brass with a fine nib. When you look at this, you can see that this fine on the Caveco is really different from the fine on the Lamy Terra, which is almost the same as the medium on the Lamy CP1. So we have lots of uh, variations between brands and even inside the same brand and model. The ink it has inside is the Pelican 4001 Brilliant Red, which is a lighter red than the above. I think you can see maybe a little more orangey. So this is a, a drier nib. Uh, the pen works well, fine nib. So I think it's really nice and I like to see the pen with this patina that is acquiring and also the chrome clip that makes quite a, an interesting contrast. But the, the nib is also uh, silver colored and you have the chrome plated logo on top of the cap, so it makes sense. The next pen that I'm showing you is also a metal pen and is a smaller one from Caveco, also with a clip, and this is the Caveco Lilliput in copper and it also has a fine steel nib. But let's see how different it is. This is the Caveco Lilliput copper and you can see there is not much difference, maybe a little thicker but not that much difference between these and the above. The nibs are the same, so they are the same kind of unit that you can screw in the, the pen. The, so fine steel nib and the ink it has, I don't know what it is, it is an ink mix from leftovers of inks and I sometimes do that, which is not a nice thing to do. So you can see also no line variation. If you press hard maybe you can have a little bit but it's not really a, a real flex or, or a real line variation. You need to press it very hard. It is a very small pen. Very nice. The next pen is also a Caveco and it is the Caveco Supra. And let me bring back the Caveco Lilliput. The Supra is of the same size but it is thicker also. You can have um, the other piece here that is kind of the barrel extender that I'm not using. So this pen to be used like this you also need to uh, post the cap on the barrel so you screw it in and there you have a full size pen. And this is the Caveco Supra with uh, steel with a fine steel nib. I love the nib on this pen. I really like the way this pen writes. By the way, let me bring back the Lilliput and you can see that the nib on this Caveco is a number 6 nib. Very beautiful and nice and it is more bouncy also, maybe because of the size. Inside this pen has the Waterman South Sea Blue again. This pen is a little drier than the Lamy CP1 and I think you can see it because the same ink looks much darker on the CP1 than on the Caveco Supra. About the line variation in this pen you can 
have some. You cannot press too much, but you can really have some line variation. And this is very nice. This pen is gorgeous, looks amazing. And when you uncap, when you uncap it, or, or when you cap it, it is a very small pen that you can carry everywhere. The next pen that I'm showing is also a Caveco. And that Caveco is the new, this is very recent, it, they were released in August. Let me change the light again a little bit because I need to move my paper. So this is Caveco Student and this color, which the barrel is the same as some others, but the, the color is the this beautiful brown, is called 20s Jazz. This one has a medium steel nib. It is the same nib that you can find on the Lilliput, for example, but, or in the special, this one is gold plated like the one like the one, no, I didn't show you anyone like this with gold plated nib. So, medium, and the ink inside is Caveco Caramel Brown. And about line variegation, you can try to press a little bit, but what you have is the same thing that you have in the other number 5 size nib. Uh, because in that one you can have some line variation but it is a number 6 nib so the nib on the Supra is the largest nib of this selection so far the next pen is also a Caveco student I have this ink because I received them recently I have to make some videos, some comparisons and so they are inked it is the same pen but with a different cap, like a raspberry color and this is called Caveco Student 30s Blues with a broad... I know I don't use them that often but I got this nib from Caveco and I thought I should use it. This is a a broad 14 karat gold nib. Um, by the way, I just want to tell you that when you buy these pens, they come with steel nibs, not gold nibs, but you can just unscrew and replace the nib and try something different, just to let you know. This comes with steel nibs, not with gold nibs. So this is the Pilot Hiroshizuku Yamabudo which is a nice magenta color and you can see that with this pen you can have a little line variation I think this broad nib has a, a little bit of um, stubbiness and when you press harder you can have more line variation a, a nib of this kind, I don't love it because I have a small handwriting and it's does not suit me, but it's nice when you want to show all the possible shading of an ink. So this can be an interesting thing to do. Like this if you want to show what Yamabudo can do. Let me put this down again and let's move into another Caveco. I wonder if I should say Caveco, as I usually say, or I should say Kawiko because that's how the owner of Caveco calls it, maybe, maybe, not maybe. He knows better than I, I'm for sure. The next pen is this, Caveco Sport, in orange. So this is the Caveco AL Sport, and the name of the pen is this, Ackerman Orange. This pen is an exclusive for the Ackerman store in Amsterdam. 
and they made this exclusive which is very nice and they sent me this for review it has a fine steel nib which is similar to the other ones that I showed you but this one is coated in black so it means it has more feedback and I would say this line is really fine it looks more like a, an extra fine than a real fine but I have inside so this is a fine but inside it has Caveco oh it is called this is called Sunrise Orange and Sunrise Orange is known for being a quite dry ink and I think that's what happens so that's why it looks so thin maybe it I could get a better ink a better flowing ink for this pen and this nib the final Caveco we've been staying in Germany <laughs> since the start of the video so the next pen is the Caveco collection in dark olive it's a beautiful color I really enjoy this pen so this is the Caveco collection dark olive Caveco collection is the special edition that Caveco makes now every uh, is starting to make uh, special collectors items and this is one of those with medium nib this is the third edition uh, already this year it was uh, released in August there are two other colors the vibrant violet which is an AL sport and the light lavender which is a skyline sport and this one has Graf von Faber Castell Olive Green the same kind of nib, very smooth with no feedback like the one the black nib has and you can see here that the, the pen is the, the, the the color of the ink and the color of the pen, I think they are really good matches. And let's go to another pen that I have inked for a very, very long time. And it is quite a strange choice, but it has an explanation. It's a pen from China and we are talking about the Jinhao Centennial, which is a pen that is kind of a copy of the Parker Centennial dual fold um, and it has a very beautiful material that is called uh, red koi and it has this nib which is a food nib so this is the Jin Hao Centennial and you can choose the the way the angle and you have very different lines and this is how I sometimes use this pen to make big titles in some documents to know what I'm talking about. So for the title, sometimes there's this ink to do things like this. This is, you know, Centennial, like this. Red Koi. And that's why I use this, um, this pen most of the time. And it has a Fude nib. For me, it's... I don't like to write this way, but for titles, yes, it's useful so I know where I am and at which part of the document uh, I am working in. So, this is a food and nib, and what it has inside is the same since ever. It's an ink mix. I'm not really worried if someday I clog this pen or something happens because this is a cheap pen with an interesting nib and it's here to be used. I'm not very worried with it, but it looks nice. Uh, by the way, this obviously allows for a lot of line variation depending on the angle and you can see that's very obvious what you can get from this pen. Now, we will go to Ireland where this pen came from and yes I'm still using it I like it a lot 
This is the gravitas with skulls. I love the gothic look of this pen. I like the gravitas that much that I already uh, purchased the new gravitas pocket pen that was released very recently and I have uh, I ordered it I didn't check how if it is already in the mail or not but I will have one of those to show you someday the pocket from gravitas my only complaint is it doesn't have a logo there or a skull the logo is somewhere in the cap it is there this is the logo of Gravitas and I think the nib should have the logo or a skull it would match nicely so this is the Gravitas how is the official name? Stainless Steel Skull Edition I love the skulls, I love everything about this pen it has a medium steel nib which is a Yovo nib and it has inside uh, which one it is oh yes one of my favorite reds it is the Mont Blanc William Shakespeare which is called also velvet red the you cannot have line variation, but the writing experience is very smooth, very pleasant. The pen is very heavy, but so, so comfortable to hold. So, if you ask me if I think this is a good pen, yes, yes, yes it is. I didn't make the review yet, because I, I've i not been able to keep, thing, to keep things in order in my pen life, but I'm trying to. The next pen that I will show you is a pen that comes from I want to say from nowhere <laughs> okay I will say this pen comes from Lisbon it comes from the flea market this was the first pen that I bought on the fir not first pen this is the pen that I bought on the the only pen I bought on the first time I went to the flea market in Lisbon after all the pandemic sh shutdowns so it was nice to have it it doesn't have any brand, it was very very cheap it has a, a cheap steel nib gold plated with no gold anymore it has a very nice ink window and it is a piston filler and it has a very strange nib that I want to talk about it someday maybe I will need to put here the magnifying glass but you can see that the nib, tip of the nib is cut like they call it a foot, is very plain, very sharp, so if you write on the right spot it really is a sweet spot, if you go out there it, outside that spot it's awful so I call these the like this it is wonderful, unbranded grey pen from Lisbon flea market I think I'm going, I don't know which kind of nib this is, I would say it is a medium I'm, I'm starting to, to do like Wasky Squirrel that gives names to the named pens mostly like senator pens and it has inside also a Waterman South Sea Blue and this ink is really nice, I'm using it again, you can see it looks again much darker than it looks on the Cavec Supra this pen is very very wet, so it puts down a lot of ink on paper, it is an interesting pen but I know nothing about it so, this was the unbranded with an unknown origin and we'll go, I think today I have a little the representation of country is very little because I have one that I don't know where it came from one from Ireland, one from China and lots from Germany so f one, two, three, 
different countries because when I can't even identify and now I go to another country in the other side of the world at least in my position so in the other side of the Atlantic the United States of America and this is the Schiffer intrigue so this is the Schiffer intrigue maybe this one is getting low on ink I'm using some pens and I'm drying them I'm getting I'm leaving them empty and cleaning and replacing them uh, Schiffer intrigue yes I think it's out of ink it doesn't skip usually so it I think it doesn't have enough ink uh, Schiffer intrigue blue with a fine and this one is really uh, really fine nib and see it there and it is a gold nib so fine gold nib with Parker no it's not Parker sorry it has Schiffer script jet black okay no it, it's it's really skipping it it was not skipping so what I can say is that it's running out of ink now so maybe it's time to to clean it and I'm not sure I would put it to rest a little bit for some time but I think I will need to make the review so maybe it will be inked again so maybe it will appear on the next month's video about the pens for for October maybe now the next pen is also a Schiffer and this is this one has this texture that I really like and the white dot this one has the white dot also So this is the Schiffer Legacy 2 in, what, how is the name of this one, uh, let me check, Linear Matte Black, it has a nib that I don't know which, which is, I think it is a medium nib and it has Schiffer Script Turquoise and this one is a very th has a very thick line and very wet so this is really a pleasure to write but it is a little bit too thick and a little bit too wet for my taste this Schiffer Intrigue is very fine but today is too dry for my taste so I think it's getting uh, low on ink this one is not low on ink and also has a gold nib as you can see and from the Schiffer Legacy we'll go to the last Schiffer of the video and I think no it's not the last American pen there is also another American pen this is beautiful isn't it? So this is the this one also skips always skips a little bit, but I tend to see they skip more at the beginning of this uh, notepad. I think the angle is not that good in this place. So this is the Schiffer Balance Two. The color is crimson glow and the nib I would say maybe a fine maybe a medium and it has you can see it skips sometimes and that's very annoying let me show you the nib it's a gold nib feather feathers touch the engraving not engraving the the embossing on the nib is very uh, strong and this one has Parker Quink Black and that's why I was confusing the inks between the two pens and 
you can see in this one you can have some line variation which you can't have on those inlaid nibs of chiffre. So beautiful pen, beautiful vintage design. I really enjoy this pen. The next pen is, we'll do a jump from the United States of America to Italy. And it will not be the last Italian pen. This is, this may be the last time you see this pen. This is the Scribo Piuma, which is an amazing pen with uh, almost like nib. And it writes beautiful, it is beautiful, it is expensive, and it's not mine. It is from Apple Boom as a loan, and when it's out of ink, it will be cleaned and it will be returned to Apple Boom. I don't want it, I don't like it enough to buy it. Yes, I like it a lot, but it's more than 500 euros. It is a little expensive, so I will not keep this one. I have to send it back. So you can see there, Scribo. Also, gold nib. Feel the writing, says there, with an 18 karat gold nib. A fine one. And this fine nib is the Scribo. I didn't make the review, actually I already recorded the review, but it's not ready yet. Utopia, or Utopia, with a fine nib. And the ink it has is Leonardo Taurasi Vino, which is a nice burgundy color. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Now, this is how the pen performs. The nib on this pen is amazing. It's not like a flex nib that will flex when you don't want to. That doesn't happen. But if you want to flex it a little bit, you can do it. And it also puts a lot of ink in the page, as you can see there. So very well made, very well tuned. This pen really is very close to perfection in my way of seeing it. I really enjoy it. So when you see the review, if you don't want to watch the review when I make it, uh, I understand. It's all said here. It is one of the best pens I ever used. Now, I will go from um, Italy to Japan, and we have three Japanese pens. So here it is. This is the Pilot Silver Carp, and there is a carp. Some people call it also Koi. And this one has a beautiful 18 karat gold nib. This pen is made of silver, so it's quite soft, very easy to scratch, and yes, I already put some marks, some scratches on the, on the pen, but you can see there is a scratch there on the bottom of the, this cap band. It's very thin, but it's very easy to, to do this. I don't know how it was done. It is a very nice pen. So this is the Pilot. Silver Carp, also called Koi, with a medium nib, gold nib, as I showed you, this inlaid nib, which is very nice. Let me show it next to the Schiffer Legacy 2, so you can see it is quite a large nib. And the ink it has inside is something that I struggle a lot to say. It is the Kyo no Oto, and the color is Ochiguriru, or something like that. The nib on this pen is amazing, and it has a fine line that can easily go to a, maybe a broad line if you press it a little bit. It writes really well, but I think someday I need to try to change the ink because there is 
something about the feel of this ink that I don't love that much inside this pen. I can't say what it is, but I really enjoy the pen. The pen is very beautiful. Uh, it may be the most expensive pen in my collection so far, because there will be something coming someday. don't know when, but it will. And that one will be the most expensive pen in my collection, but we'll have to wait. I also have to wait for it. So now I have here from the United, the, from the Japan, we go to the United Kingdom, uh, to England, where this pen comes from. This is a Parker Dual Fold, but the English Dual Fold. I have, to, I have to clean the threads because they are a little stained by the previous owner, but I didn't want to yet. So this is a, a Parker Massima Dual Fold from England, 14 karat gold, as you can see there. It is a number 15 nib, which means it is the, the big size nib. And you have there 14 karat gold. Just to, for some comparison, if you want, if you are wondering which is the size of this nib, here you have a number 6 nib from the Gravitas, and it, here is the nib from the Dufold. I would say it's also similar to a number 6, it is a number 50 from Parker, so it is very similar in size but um, different in shape. So, this is the Parker Massima Dual Fold in Burgundy. It's not my favorite color for pens, but I had a black one that was almost perfect, but the nib was stub, and I couldn't write with it, and I sold it, and I kept this one, and this one is really amazing. So, I, I know it's burgundy, I don't like burgundy pens, but I'll keep it, <laughs> I'm sure. This is a fine gold nib, and the ink it has, I think you guessed it, it is the it is Vintage Parker Quink Black, which has that very strong chemical smell, which I enjoy. This is a typical Parker nib that writes well, it is a little bit bouncy, but you can also try to have some line variation, and if you can, by pressing quite hard, it is almost any. So, very nice with the air on the, on the nib, the air on the clip, and that jewel that matches the barrel. And you have the Massima Dual Fold imprint somewhere there, and I think I will not be able to show it to you. It will be hard to focus. But believe me, it's written there. And now, we were in Japan, we went to the United Kingdom, we will go back to Japan to another brand that I enjoy a lot, Sailor. And this is a pocket pen, which I enjoy. They have very large caps, very large sections, very small barrels, and they are made to be posted, and they became, they become a full-sized pen. And this is the, I don't know the exact, model no name. This is the uh, Sailor Pocket Pen with a fine gold nib and inside it has also Parker Quink Black. And I always find very very fun how the same ink looks different uh, between pens about line variation you can have some but the most interesting thing about this pen really is the the shape how it's constructed but the kind of feedback you get from a sailor pen which is something that i find amazing and even this pocket pen not a lot of uh, you have lots of feedback not a lot of line variation but still if you really enjoy that you can have it and the three last pens one is also from Japan, and you know this pen for a long time, uh, not for years, but since I got it. It's been inked since then. It is the beautiful Sailor King of Pen in the profit shape. 
it has this large 21 karat gold nib. Let me just compare with the nib on the Parker Massima du Fold. It is quite bigger. And so this is the Sailor King of Pen. I, I, I really enjoy how this pen writes. It has a medium nib, but it's not very thick, so it's quite good. And the color is the dark champagne. It was a special, exclusive edition, not sure. And the ink it has inside is one of my favorites that is really, really, really running out. The Mont Blanc Daniel Defoe and line variation. Can you see any? The nib is amazing. I really enjoy this pen. Very large, it is green, it is transparent green. It's not that easy to see. It is a... I think you can see now it is transparent. It is a cartridge converter pen. As most of the pens I have here are, uh, except, so let me just go back about this because I didn't uh, cover that. All of the, them are cartridge converters, uh, except for the, 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 which one? This grey one from the flea market, which is a piston filler. Also, the this one, this can be the Schiffer Legacy, can be a piston filler or it can have a touchdown filling system. I will talk about it when I make the review. And I have also this one, which was the, the Parker Massimo Dufold, which has that typical aerometric filling system from Parker, which is nice, takes lots of ink at least enough ink to be comfortable to write with this pen every day. So, very nice pen, I really like this one. It is a very large pen, but, let me put it like that. This is the Gravitas, and the Gravitas is very big, and the King of Pen can be even longer. And let's go from Japan, from a very big pen, to a pocket pen, from the United States and this is the Sean Design Pocket 6. This is one pen that even the threading is so well made that you just want to keep uh, screwing and unscrewing the cap. It is a pocket pen so very small you need to screw the cap on the barrel and you have a full-size pen with a number 6 Yovo nib. The same criticism I made about the Gravitas, it would be nice to have an engraving, but I understand that smaller brands cannot afford to have specially engraved nibs for them. So this is the Sean Design Pocket 6 in copper, which I would say it is one of my favorite pen materials with a steel fine nib and inside it has the Mont Blanc William Shakespeare. Again, yes, it was also on the Gravitas. And let me just do this for you to check. Very stiff nib, so no line variation. But now check the difference in color from the... We have here the medium nib for, to a fine nib. Same brand, same everything, but the nibs uh, perform differently uh, or the color looks different different because in this case the, the line is thinner, the pen is a little drier and you don't see as a deep color as you see on the other one above. And finally, I'm showing the pen that I received yesterday. If I still post the video today, yes, I received the pen yesterday and it is this very beautiful thing which is quite hard to show on camera very hard because of all the reflections but this material is really 
really, really nice. I really like it. So this is the Monte Grappa Mia Cityscape for Corsani. Corsani is the store in Rome and this is kind of a special run for them. And this one has a fine steel nib. It's a number six nib, I think made by Yovo, but with a special uh, tuning. And it has inside the, an ink that has a very nice sheen, so you can see the sheen on the feed. And this is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Purple, which is a very nice ink. This pen you can try to have some line variation but you need to press very hard and it's not really made for that. It works well with a very nice ink flow for a medium nib. The section seems to be very small but it's comfortable to hold there but it's even more comfortable in my opinion to hold over the threads. That's something that I've been developing. I think I prefer to hold pens over the threads and this pen is very very comfortable, very beautiful I really think this is a very, very nice pen with a wonderful material, as you can see. So, this is the last pen for this video, uh, and I'm looking at the camera fro to the screen. It doesn't look... the lighting is perfect, I'm not sure what's wrong with this, but I hope you could see the pens well. This is all I had to show you today. I have to thank you so much for watching to such a long video and I hope to meet you here again for next occasion. So, see you then. Bye.